No, just camera two is live. Yo, what's up? Welcome to Mechanical Keyboards Live. I'm your host, Skews Pete, wearing my Skews Pete hat. Steph is in the background. Stay what's up, Steph. Yo. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> um, for those of you who are watching camera two, you could hear us that whole time. Uh, we don't normally argue that much. We wait until we turn the microphone on in order to start arguing. It's a thing. It's a thing we do. Anchor bait, what's going on? Up in the house, I see you've just ordered GH60 from a One Up Keyboard. It's awesome. Jesper Lundqvist is in the house. Dr. Doom Apple. Giovanni Mugerli is here. Anchor bait, I've already called you out. Uh, Dale Balazabas, RD, what's up? Uh, Miguel Muratu, did I call him out already? No, I did on the mic too, but I don't know. Uh, Archon is here. Richard Smith is here. Dane Carter is here. You've been here a while, man, already. Welcome. Richard Smith is in the house. Jesper Lundqvist. Disco Frog. Yo, yo, yo. Welcome back, everybody. Okay. So much to talk about. You guys can't even see how big this pile is on my desk. So much to talk about today before we get into the action of this over here, which is the Prionic build. Can't wait for that. Euphorical is in the house. What's going on, Euphorical? Disco Frog, yo! Okay, let's talk it out. One, next week we're at Maker Fair. Maker Fair, big deal. Uh, oh, we were supposed to do a contest for the Maker Fair tickets. Yes, sir. Okay, well, if anybody is in New York, New or, York City, or surrounding, or surrounding areas and would like and has to be willing to go, and you would like a ticket, email right now at oneupkeyboards at gmail.com. But you have to be in the New York area. We're going to know because we have to mail you the tickets. So uh, let's let's see that. If you're in the New York area and you're watching the stream right now and you want to go to Maker Fair, it's the only time I'm going to mention the tickets is right now. Is that okay? How, how many? You have no idea how many people are watching. I have no idea. I do. I know exactly. 22 people are watching. How many of those people are in New York or the greater New York area? Or Philly or... Or Philly or Boston, Boston or want to drive. Willing to make the trip. Want to go to Maker Fair next weekend. I think you get a pass for Saturday and Sunday. No, one day. For Saturday or Sunday and it's going to be awesome. Okay. Let's start. Let's start by talking about this. This is the new high profile case that was featured on, uh, what's his name? I've totally forgotten. Quakums. Quakums featured it today. This is it. Um, it has a logo at the back by the maker, which is Mechanisk. You see M and the reverse K there. That is Mechanisk's logo. It's a 60% high profile case. This is my beta. It's in red, uh, but none of the other ones are in red. They're available in black, gray, and purple, even though uh, the one that Quakums had was silver and this one is red, they're not available in these colors, so deal with it. Uh, these are gonna be extremely expensive. I don't know why he said they were gonna be affordable compared to, say, a $350 Fiel, actually $425 Fiel, or $350 FMZ. These, these are gonna be bargain level, but compared to your low profile case, these are gonna be like five or six of them, so. Uh, look out for that when it's coming soon. I'm in Poughkeepsie. Poughkeepsie. Yeah, if you're willing to come to... Yeah, yeah you want to come to New York? You want to come to the thing? Email one up keyboards. You want to do it? You come, you come hang out with us. Come say hi. Come say hi. What's up? Yeah, that's all it is. It's just come say hi. You can't really hang out with us. We only have a little stall thing. But yeah, man, you want to come? Be the first to email us at one of keyboards at gmail.com. Okay, so that's the high profile case. If you have any questions about it, file them under high profile case. That's it. Nothing on the bottom. Uh, let me just walk you around this case. Wait a sec. We still got we still got zero followers and zero viewers. Give me one second. I just want to fix that because it's a pain in the butt. Uh, overlay plus super. Uh, whoops. No, I'm just going to delete that. There, it's gone. Uh, but you know what? Oh, I'm just going to put myself to small. You know what? Today, enabled is a super chat thingy-majig. 
So if somebody super chats me, it should appear right in the middle of the screen, right like here. There should be a super chat thing that goes, but it won't make any noise, but it'll do this with my fingers. Although my fingers won't be here when it happens. But I'm just telling you that if somebody super chats, you're going to see it right here. And if somebody subscribes, you're going to see it right up here. It's going to be like up in the house. I think, I don't know. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe and we'll test if it works. Go ahead, press the subscribing now. If you unsubscribe and resubscribe, I don't think it works. But if you're a new subscriber, thingy, thingy. Okay, so that was the high profile case from Mechanisk and from one of keyboards. I think we're selling it exclusively. I don't think anybody else has it. I think it's just us. So we're pretty pumped about that. Okay, that's that. They're gonna be coming soon. We don't have an exact launch date yet, but we're hoping it should be within a week or so, but we'll find out. Okay, next thing, the Ann Pro mechanical keyboard. I'm not reviewing this. I'm gonna sit down so you don't have to look at my uh, man chest. Here's my man chest. Um, I'm gonna sit back down. Uh, so the Ann Pro, I'm not reviewing on the show, but, but, the Ann Pro is selling for $60 at 99 cents with a coupon code exclusive for my viewers. Uh, I was in touch with GearBest. Uh, I posted a while ago on Reddit about the Ann Pro review and we sold like 20 Ann Pros in like 10 minutes. Uh, they ran out of Ann Pros because of you guys. And so I asked them to put more in stock. They put more in stock. There's 50 coupon codes, which I announced yesterday uh, on Reddit. Is the loud noise you made before disabled? What is the loud noise you had before disabled? I'm on my headphones and have the volume turned way down. Uh, I, w I, w somebody just press subscribe. I didn't, I didn't have it on the screen long enough, but somebody just press subscribe. I saw it right. It happened right there. Damn. Damn. I didn't see it. Wait. Falling Titan, welcome to the show, Falling Titan. I might need to extend that a little bit longer so that I get the chance to read it. But Falling Titan, welcome to the show. So the Ann Pro, as I was saying, they've got 50 new coupon codes. Now, I announced it on Reddit that they'd restocked after my live stream, 50 codes, and 10 of them have already gone. So there's there's 40 left. It's still, it's in abundance. Uh, but Ann Pro, $60.99. It's worth it. Go check it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go check in the about section below down. It's, it's down here. Or if you're on mobile, it's over, it's over here. It's like a V that's over. Where's my hand gone? It's, it's over here somewhere. It's like there, but with a V you'll see it. It's fine. Okay. That's the end pro. We've talked about that. We're not going to talk about it anymore. Maybe later I'll talk about it a bit more. Who knows? Okay. The next thing is this week's giveaway. That's also in the about section below. It's the Master Set MS120. That's it. I have nothing else to say about it. Cooler Master Master Set MS120. It's an RGB memchanical clicky switch, but it's a giveaway. You might as well enter the giveaway. It's got a clicky switch and it's memchanical. That's neat. And it comes with a mouse. It comes with this mouse or this mouse, which is the other mouse. I just wrote on the side of it what it is. It's Cooler Mouse Master Option 2. Yeah, 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 blah, blah, blah. Or there's this mouse, which you can win, which is the Master Mouse MM520. Or there's this mouse that you can win, which is the Master Mouse MM530. That's all in the About section below. I'm pointing like this, but even though it's, it's like here, go into the About section below, go register on gleam.io. You'll find the link there, and you can win all this awesome stuff from Cooler Master. Thank you very much to Cooler Master. That's all the stuff there. Thank you. That's awesome of you guys. Uh, please go sign up. And if you are already subscribed to this channel, which I know that you are because you're here, all you have to do is just sign up to Gleam and you use the subscription to this channel and you can uh, be in to win. And there's daily interactions. It's all awesome. It's all worth doing. Awesome. Okay. Next thing I want to show off is some junk mail that we got. And I thought it was super funny. So I really wanted to show it off. It's here. Can you see it? You can tell that it's junk mail because, oh, come on, focus for me, focus for me. Well, now's a good time. Let's, why don't we set the action cam here? 
There it is, though. It's just coming to focus. Can you guys see it? Oh. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn on the focus and see if I can make it happen. I threatened to turn on the focus a second ago. Configure video, camera control. Have you set the price of the clipe yet? No, nope, not yet. Soon. Come on, focus. There it is. Lup Keybard. They sent us this custom pen and they were like, do you want a custom pen? You can get it made with your company's name on it. Here's an example. Bar Pard. Seems like a nice pen though. If you're a pen spinner like me, you think, hey, this isn't a bad pen. If only it said Lup Keep Bard on it. All right, moving right along. Switch back to overhead. It's a great, it's a cool pen though, right? And it's got one of the stylish things on the back. Who knows, maybe in the future you can go onto the website and buy yourself your very own Lup Keep Bard pen. Just saying. Hashtag just saying. Jesper Lundqvist testing the super chat pop-up thingy. Yes, it works. <sighs> dancing time. All right. All right, let's get that dance in. It works, yes. Yes. Got a little more dancing. All right. All right. A little more dancing over here. <sighs> Jesper Lundvist with the first super chat of the day for SEK, which is Swedish Kroners 20. We were up to $70, cro uh, $70 before. Uh, okay, Google, what is 70 Kroners in US dollars? 70 Kroners. Okay, Google, how much is 20 Swedish Kroners in US dollars? Two United States dollars. Let's let's pop us up at seventy-two of two hundred, because again we're going after one extra. We're going after an extra webcam. Oh, and I got something awesome. I bought something awesome. I can't wait to show you what I got. It's so cool. It's gonna like, it's not gonna change the channel, but it's gonna redefine. Just this is the symbol for it. It's going to redefine what we do here. It's going to change. You're going to love it. Jonathan says, Pete, why not Twitch? Because they don't do 4K. That's all. I need to go through restream.io and I need to transcode it. And transcoding costs $30 a month. I don't make $30 a month from this. So I know you guys think like, oh yeah, Pete, no problem. You live in a tiny Manhattan apartment. You pay like thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in rent a month. You have 30 bucks? No, don't. So if you'd like me to Twitch, go ahead and support the hell out of my channel. Even then, I don't know. Um, two boards I'm going to review, and I'm going to review them quickly before we get to the Prionic. The first one is the Expos, and the second one, even though... It's the Moto Speed K87S. Even though I'm doing the Prionic today, uh, I thought I would let everybody get together, assemble up, you know what I mean? Huddle up. Just before we do the Prionic thing, I thought I would throw in a couple quick reviews. Even though, what time is it? We're running way behind schedule. I said, I told Jack, start pumping at 7.30 and it's like 18 minutes past. Like, I gotta get to this thing. But a lot of people ask about the Moto Speed. It says live for gamers, or it says live for gamers. 
No, I take it back. It says live for games or live for games. I don't know. Is it possible for you to see a distribution what resolution your viewers use? My viewers use almost exclusively the uh, the YouTube. That's the truth. I mean, I was getting like four to ten viewers on uh, on the uh, what's it called Twitch, and those four to ten viewers weren't really talking. So the what chat was what? What resolution? What resolution? What? What resolution your viewers? Oh, is it possible for you to see a distribution what resolution? Your viewers use absolutely it's totally possible in fact i have that information right here hopefully everybody's watching in 4k uh just to um just to pump that thing down uh here in fact why don't i show you why don't i show you just so you can see what the heck is going on here that would be over in this one which is called tester uh and if you see here we currently have 42 viewers and uh, you can see the the highest one there is actually other, or at least I believe that it's other. I'm actually colorblind, so I assume that it's other. But other is 1440p. Uh, that's the one that doesn't show. So you can see that uh, after that, 480 was doing pretty strong, uh, but 4K is also in there, or it was in there. I don't know. If you haven't already cranked your resolution up, up, up. All right. Let's do a quick smash here. Just quick. Y'all ready for this? I'm just gonna hammer right through it. I'm just gonna do do the review just like this. You ready? And here we go. Hi, I'm Skeeth Pete. Today we're gonna take a quick look at the Moto Speed. Live for games or live for games, whatever it is. A lot of people on my stream have asked about this keyboard in the past, the K87S, and I know uh, almost nothing about it, uh, except that it's got a white red switch. At least that's what the that's what the thingy says. White red switch. It's made in China. No idea what I'm up against here. No idea. All right, let's get inside. All right, some stuff in the box, including some keycaps. Those probably fell off. A keycap puller. A registration. I think that's registration. It's all in Chinese. No idea. And a an instruction booklet that is also mostly in Chinese. Uh, no, there's some English bits in here. All right. Huh. Okay get to that oh no this is a why this is a protective thingy for the back of your keyboard why I don't know so it's got a plastic clear back but on the inside of it, you can see is like a white piece. So you can't see the solder job under there. It's a clear plastic piece under there. Uh, it's got some flippy outy feet. Uh, it's also got a non braided USB cable. And for those of you who've seen my reviews before, you will know that these keycaps are extremely common. Double shot keycaps. I think they're ABS. Difficult to tell. Uh, they got non-contiguous. They're everywhere. These these keycaps. Now I just want to take a quick look. These are Utemu switches. Now I've played a lot with Utemu switches. Let me just show you up nice and close like this. These are Utemu switches. And you can see down at the bottom there, there's a little LED. I'm not sure if that's an RGB LED or if it's just a straight white LED yet, but we'll figure that out soon enough. But these are Utemu reds, which are fairly, fairly uncommon, actually. I haven't seen a lot of them. Uh, 
Uh, it's got a metal metallic top. I'm going to say that's aluminum. You can see the PCB right there. Uh, it's a fairly flat keyboard. I'm just going to show you with the action cam here. Oh. Just trying to, uh, you can see it's quite uh, shallow. It's not a very steep keyboard. Um, it's quite a shallow one, quite flat. It's pretty neat. Uh, from the overhead view, you can see that it's got a standard bottom row here, uh, which means it's got three on the left, four on the right. Okay, Uteni Reds are scratchy. They are like scratchy. Uh, I use a lot of Gateron Reds because they're not scratchy. Uh, they're very smooth Gaterons. Uh, I also have a lot of Cherries and the new Cherry retooling. They're not quite as smooth as Gaterons, but they're, they're a lot smoother than these. Can you hear that scratching? And I'm gonna hold it up to the mic. Does soldier cam still exist? It's called solder cam, and trust me when I say we'll be using it later. Uh, okay, so just having a quick type on the keyboard. One of the advantages I will give this keyboard for sure is that the F row is right jammed up against the top of those numbers. So if you're a gamer who's using those, those switches up there, uh, for example, in I don't know, StarCraft, uh, then those, the proximity to those is, is really good. Let me just show off the, uh, that font on these keycaps again. I don't even want to show it off. I just want to say like, look, look at this weirdness. Look how low the O key is and how high the I key is. See what I'm saying? Low. Let me push it in and make sure. Oh no. It's just because these keycaps have all been pushed down properly. Ugh. It's definitely an aluminum plate given the amount of flex in there. I'm going to say, for the people on my live stream, even though I'm going to give this, uh, you know, it's a decent keyboard, I'm going to say, you know what, go spend the money on the N Pro instead. Uh, you know, is this a budget keyboard around the, what was it, around the $45 mark? I would say around the $45 mark. Uh, fine, you know, it's a budget keyboard around the $45 mark. Um, but, no, save up by the Master Keys S. Well, thanks very much for tuning in today, guys. That has been my review of the Moto Speed, what is it, K87S. Well, thanks for tuning in today, guys. That has been my review of the Motospeed K87S keyboard. It's a budget keyboard. Uh, if you're going to buy a low-end keyboard like that, you know what? I should Let's just do the due diligence, which I haven't done yet. Let's plug it in. I mean, the least thing I should do is plug it in. Oh, it is RGB. Now I understand the reasoning behind the bottom. Ah. Ah. Alexa, turn off the lights. Actually, don't do that. Okay. Huh.
Alexa, turn off the studio. Okay. There you go. Obviously, the flickering is just happening as a result of my monitor and camera. It's not actually happening here. You can see that the keycaps are also backlit. Uh, there's going to be a way to affect all this. Uh, but I'll need the instruction booklet in order to figure that out. Okay, function. There you go. Oh, it's, it's RGB top as well. Look at that. Wow, that's a lot of RGB-ness happening. Random colors there. Wow. Wow. It's a lot of like, um, it's a lot of RGB. It's, there's not much else one can say about that other than holy RGB Batman. Uh, right. Holy RGB. And we're back. Plus there's uh, functions that you can do with different clusters. I'm gonna turn the lights back on. Alexa, turn the studio back on. Sorry, I didn't find stereo back. Alexa, turn the studio on. That just changes how quickly these go at the bottom. Look at them go. Well, there you have it. Thank you to GearBest for sending me through the Motospeed K87S. You know what, having gone through it, the RGB thing, if you're really into RGB and you really want a, like a, an RGB keyboard that has a lot of RGB-ness happening to it, this is, at $40, it's probably a pretty good price. Um, Dr. Doomapple says his super chat is delayed. Hmm. Hmm. Well, thank you again for sending this through. It's been uh, fun to play with. Um, Again, as a budget board uh, with RGB, uh, it does have limitations. Even though it's got the standard bottom row and means you can change the keycaps easily, you're going to be stuck with Utemi reds, which are a bit scratchy. Now, I personally would probably avoid that. Uh, maybe go with the Master Keys S uh, if you don't want the RGB or the Master Keys Pro S if you do. Um, but you know, if you're looking for a lot of lights to bling out on your desk and you want a budget mechanical keyboard, this is definitely better than any men mechanical keyboard you can get. And those have a lot of RGB-ness happening. So you know what? Actually, I'm gonna say this one, this one ain't so bad. This one ain't so bad. That's it for my review. Thanks again for tuning in. Don't forget to press like, don't forget to press subscribe, and we'll see you guys back again very soon. And that's it for, I mean, I don't know. All right, with 39 viewers, we're getting close and closer to doing assembling the Prionic. If you haven't already, now's a great time to smash that like button. We're gonna be doing the Prionic in almost no time, doing a full build. But just before we get to that, 
after looking at that budget keyboard. Let's take a quick look at this one. Hi guys, welcome to the stream. My name is Ski with Pete, and today we're taking a look at the X Bose. This keyboard is currently on Kickstarter, uh, though I had an early preview release uh, to give some feedback to these guys. I'm trying to get inside the box. Uh, if you haven't already watched it, you can probably see the button that appears now, or you can go and search for the Expos prototype review that I did. Um, just getting inside the box, there's an accessories box over here on the right, and there's a picture of a naked man on the left. Uh, normally, these are pictures of men and women overlaid on each other, uh, but in this case in particular, um, it's just straight up the picture of a naked man. All right then. Uh, now I know that this bo this keyboard is actually developed by a doctor, and I believe that the doctor lives in Canada. So I don't know. Maybe it's not that surprising to you that there's a picture of a naked man on it, uh, but it's a little bit shocking to me. All right, uh, there's the accessories box and this. Uh, but let's just reveal the keyboard here. There is the keyboard. Ooh, it's definitely gone through some upgrades and some changes since the last time I saw it. All right, before I get into that, let's just take a quick look at the accessories box. Uh, this is where the cable is going to live. That's it. That's all that's inside the accessories box is a cable. But this is a removable cable. Uh, USB-C. That's a USB-C right there. Let me show you on the action cam. You see that right there, USB-C. USB-C there, look at that. Uh, as we all know, USB-C is preferred for keyboards uh, because, uh, but it's got a USB-A on this end. So this end is compatible with the future, but this end is compatible with the, I don't know. Just saying. Hashtag just saying. So in order for the Expos to be made, it needed to hit a particular goal on... Uh, what's it called? Kickstarter. On Kickstarter. But I was sent this keyboard three weeks ago, and it's already reached its goal. So even though I was asked uh, to show this off to my audience in case anybody would be interested, it's already reached the goal. So uh, you guys uh, can help it get your own... Or whatever. All right. I, I don't know if you can quite see this here, but if I do it this way, look, you can see it's got Expos printed into the back. It's um, It's got kind of a nice feeling. It's like a tactile rubber plastic back here, even though it also has rubber feet on it. Uh, it's got flippy outy legs, as you would quite expect uh, from a keyboard. But otherwise, it's very, very flat. Let me show you here with the action cam just how flat it is. Again, a lot of keyboards are on a steeper angle, so this one, you probably will want to pop those feet out just to just to get it there. It's a better angle. Switching back to the overhead, you can see that this has an unusual design. It's not quite ortholinear, like the Prionic that I'll be building in just a few minutes. Uh, it's like a twisted ortholinear. So um, both hands uh, can do their thing. Now, you'll also notice that on the bottom row, some unusual stuff is going on here. We got a huge alt, then a space bar, then a control, then a shift. Above that, you have an enter and a backspace. Then you have another space bar and an alt over here. Then you have a function and control before you get to the arrow keys. You also have a giant backspace key, a huge Dell key, and a giant print screen. This is a print screen, this thing. And notice it's got clicky. We're looking at clicky switches. Uh, 
Uh, it's not easy to type on. Uh, not yet, anyways. Let's just take a look at what type of switches we got under here. These are Gateron Blues. And you can see that there's an LED in there. These keycaps are double shot ABS, but the font is, for the most part, much nicer than those gaming fonts that you find on a lot of other keyboards, but still they've gone with the non-contiguous design. What I mean by the non-contiguous design here, let me just show you with a close-up. Uh, it'll just take a second to calm down, but what you can see here is that that O has a little a little dash in it at the bottom and a little dash in it at the top. Same with the nine, it's got a little dash. This eight isn't like a snowman, but it's got a little tiny line through it. This six has a tiny little line through the bottom of it. Again, the non-contiguous thing. Actually, maybe the best example is this B here. You can see there's a big space between that. Again, it's not gross like some of the gamer fonts, but still, it is something you will have to live with. The real problem that you're going to face with this one is that these caps are going to be non-replaceable. You're not going to be able to find other key caps that fit this system with this huge backspace, the uh, funny plus minus print screen Dell. So you're kind of stuck with it. Let me just show you too. I mean, the typing is a little bit awkward. You'd probably have to get used to it for a while. But if you wanted to use, say, the enter key in the middle, it's kind of a funny elbow thing I got to do to get into it. Because my thumb doesn't usually come up and press keys. And when it does, I got to move my hand out of the way to make it happen. You see, you see the way a space bar works is you press like this. You see, even with the space bar, then I kind of caught the enter, but it usually works like this, but I can't do that to the enter key without pressing the shift. So what I need to do is do this, which means I need to raise my hand up. So I suppose if I was typing like this, then I could do it more easily, but I don't actually type like that. And I defy you to find anybody who actually does. Shad Fandenhall says, hey Pete, how's that huge Chinese phone you reviewed a while back? Unfortunately, I have terrible news for you. It doesn't work with T-Mobile. So I don't know. BM McWirt says, I have a 1UP GH60 Satan that I got. I soldered GAT greens and tested and all the keys work on it. Then I flashed it with Easy AVR, the default GH60 Satan. Several keys won't work. Any ideas? Yeah, it's probably the firmware. Try another firmware on it. All right, well, let's plug this in. Take a look. Thank you to everybody who's already pressed like and who's already pressed subscribe. Uh, in just another couple minutes, I will be on to building the Prionic. Uh, just before I get to that, I wanted to do this test of this prototype keyboard. There's that USB-C, which is the Xbos. I've never seen, I've actually never seen a USB like this. Uh, whoops. I've never seen a USB like this. Look. Oh, I'm sorry. I've got to fix the focus on it again. Look. Can you see that? It's got a line down the middle. So I think you can plug it in either way. Because look, it's got on that side, you can see the things. Or on that side. So I think this is one of those reversible plugs which is kind of cool. Let's see if it reversibles. It goes in that way. Hold on. And it goes in that way too. Yeah. All right. Looks like RGB fellas. So we're up against some RGB in the house. 
Now, I don't know. This didn't come with an instruction booklet, so I really have no idea uh, what I'm doing. No. No. There we go. It's based on page up, page down. Cool, it's got some cool lighting effects in there. I'm sure there's lots more to discover about this board. The truth is this board is going to take some getting used to if you're a familiar touch typist. Uh, if you're not, uh, then you might find it easier to get used to. Um, though that's, that's pretty intuitive. Okay, let's just, let's just try typing something just to see if. I'm just going to type it into a chat window here. Uh, maybe I should do it into a... Maybe I should do it into a thing. Uh, let's just see how easy it is to type. I'm going to type that. Let's... No, I press shift. Just see how easy it is. It is to type. Well, I'm pretty close. For a first demo, actually, that was that was pretty good. Hold on, let me lock, knock it to flat. Now we can really test it. Hey, that's pretty good. I mean, not bad. Not bad. Well, guys, I hope you will go check out the Kickstarter. Thank you very much to Expos for sending this keyboard through. Again, it does have those limitations, uh, definitely. These keycaps will be extremely difficult to replace. That's for one. Uh, for two, the, um, the typing style will take a little getting used to. I'm really not sure about the functionality of this enter key, uh, unless I did it with that with my index. Sorry, I'm going to redo that uh, again. I'm going to do that again because I wasn't on my overhead. Well, thank you very much to Expos for sending through this keyboard. It definitely has some limitations. For sure, the keycaps uh, are going to be very difficult to replace. But in terms of typing, it's not actually that difficult to get used to. You could probably do it. Um, the build quality of the board itself is, is pretty good. It's uh, pretty stable. And if you're into this kind of uh, ortho design, then, you know, it's not bad. I hope you go over to Kickstarter and check it out. I'm Skew Pete. If you haven't already, please press like, please press subscribe, and come back and check out some more content soon. Thanks very much for tuning in. Well, that's it for the Expos. Let's get on to the main feature. Wait, just before I do, if you haven't already pressed like, if you haven't already pressed subscribe, do that now. Press subscribe and press like right now. If you press subscribe and you're a first time subscriber, then you will see your name pop up in the top left corner, which would be pretty fun. The other thing I want to remind everybody to do is to go check out this week's giveaway. This giveaway includes the Master Mouse MM520 from Cooler Master, the Master Mouse MM530 from Cooler Master, and the Master Set Memcanical Clicky Keyboard from Cooler Master. Also comes with the mouse, this one, or the one that's inside this box. This is, see, it says option two, if you can read my handwriting. Go check this week's giveaway. It's in the about section under gleam.io. You might as well enter to win. The other thing, by the way, is the awesome price on the 60% and mechanical keyboard that's also listed in the about section below. I think it's $60.99. Um, $60 uh, for a 60% keyboard is pretty sweet when you 
go check out and use the coupon code below. But that's not why we're here today. The reason that we're here today, right now, is to say what's up to everybody. What's up? Shad Vandenhall, BC McWirt, Dr. Doom Apple, Anchor Bait, Alex Lewis, what's going on? Uh, Alien Man 82, what's going on? How you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Don't forget. I forgot what I was going to say. Don't forget to smash that like button. It's great to see you guys. Uh, and if anybody uh, presses subscribe today, a new subscriber, your name will appear up here. And I will possibly see it or possibly miss it like I did to the last person who did it. Let's get on to the build. Some bubble wrap. Putting that aside. Some more bubble wrap. Also putting that to the side. Some stuff from OLKB, including screws and some stickers. Okay, why am I so damn hyped? Why am I so damn hyped? I'll tell you why, because right now I'm using Archon, what's up? Doug W, hi! If you haven't already said hi and you're in the chat room, just say what's up. It's okay, we're all just friends, we're just chilling out. GGC ADC, also in the house, what is going on? Alex Lewis says, oh, it's smashed. Yeah, boy. All right. I'm using a prionic right now. I'm using a prionic right now. I'm using a prionic right now. I'm also using a prionic right now. I'm using a prionic right now. And I'm using a prionic right now. And right now, solder cam. Yep, using a prionic there too. I'm also using a prionic to do this. You see, I use a prionic to make this channel possible. Shall I show you? Let's. Why don't I? Shall we? Whatever. Here's my prionic. This is it. I use it as a macro board and you can see all the different switches that I use to uh, change views and stuff and do other things and stuff. But I do it with my feet. This is the old prionic and you can tell that it's the old prionic because it's styled like it's 1985. It's got wood pieces on it. It's got wood paneling like your granddaddy's car or your great granddaddy's car or your great, great, great granddaddy's car. Welcome three year olds. Look at this thing. I love it. I was about to change cameras to my action cam, but I can't because it's here. That's how often I use a prionic. But look at it. It's like made of wood. And it's, you know, pretty nast. You know what I'm saying? But not the new one. Not the new one. The new one is gorgeous and delicious. Shall we show it off? The new Gorgeous and Delicious starts here with some bubble wrap. When we go on inside, we see this. Oh, delicious. Delicious. All right. On top here, we have this. Deliciousness. This is a stainless steel top compatible with both the MIT and the grid layouts. So you can have that central space bar or not. Let me put that to the side. Steel and steel, beautiful. Then we move on to this. This is the PCB that makes it all possible. Not much more to say about it than that, actually. Just makes it all possible. It's just dope. Uh, just taking a closer look here. It says, the Prionic Keyboard PCB Rev 2 Mass Drop Edition, OLKB.com. For those of you who don't know, for those of you who don't know, who are new to the channel, please go into the About section below Find the link to the mass drop using my affiliate code, please. Thank you. 
and then go buy yourself one of these. Look, a lot of people use this keyboard for typing. If you're into the ortho linear thing, even if you're not, if you get one and you decide you're totally not, you can use it like a macro pad like mine is. That's an expensive foot panel, says Tier Goosens. Dude, it's not an expensive foot panel. It's $140. You can buy this thing right now on MassDrop for 140 bucks. You know what I'm saying. This is the new milled aluminum bottom panel. Milled aluminum. It's pretty sweet. One thing I did notice when I was doing this, and I do have to put the little feet on it, there's no little feet holes, but also, watch this. When I put this in here, let me show you on the action cam. Look how low to the bottom, look how low to the bottom that USB connector is. That is insanely low pro. So you're gonna need you're definitely 100% gonna need either a custom cable or you're gonna need some bumpers that are gonna raise this puppy up because that is like, check this out. It's a USB mini. Let's say you had one of these cables, which is like your usual USB cable. Nah, -uh. you plug this puppy in. Look at this, it's like resting on the desk. It's never gonna happen. Then it's going to, you know, be one of these scenarios. No chance. So you're going to need to buy yourself. You're going to need to buy yourself one of the custom USB cables. Like the ones from oneupkeyboards.com, which normally I would have like a hundred of them right here. But for some weird reason, I don't have any of them. Uh, a USB uh, mini custom cable. You put them all away, but Steph. I know. Try setting up. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, I Steph, can I ask you a favor? Mm -hmm. Can you find me a USB mini? I can't get out of here. I've got keyboards all around my feet. I can't leave. Look. I'm hemmed in. What'd you do to them all? You ate some. We had like hundreds. What have we done with the ball? We use them. I can see. Yeah, several. Where, where's the where's the baggie of them though? Oh, it's not got any minis in it. Okay, I'm coming out. JD's bag of minis. What about this one? This is a mini too. Oh, one of Jonathan's. Here. Uh, My point is totally lost now. My point is entirely lost. Yeah. But I'm coming back to it. I'll edit it so it's all seamless. That stuff is a champ. She's a super champ. Let me let's let's cut back to this thing. Let me show you now on action cam. Look, if you happen to be fortunate enough to have one of these, which is a one-up keyboards custom cable, either that you made yourself or you made made by JB like this one is, that'll soon be on the website. Look, it sits flat on the desk. So you can actually plug it in and have the full awesomeness all the time because look, it sits flat on the desk. Awesome. Totally lost my point there, but you know what I'm saying. 
Sweetheart, can I give that back to you? All right, that is that. Let me just put these little feet on here. Somebody said bad design, but actually, I don't think it's a bad design. I think that it's just OLKB supporting one-up keyboards and the custom cables. That's what I think. I don't know. I thought I thought there was a good chance that uh, our man was going to be here. I thought that Jack Humbert might make a guest appearance, and he can confirm that the reason that he did it is to support one-up keyboards. Am I right? Jack, are you here? You'll be here. You'll confirm. Don't you worry. Believe the hype. Believe the hype. All right. Uh, because I don't want to scratch this up too much on my desk, I'm going to uh, put this down. Anchorbait says, you should do Zelio 67 Grand Springs and B Sun housing tactility for your feet. I'm just gonna go with B Sun Browns. Uh, let me explain why, but I'll do that in just a second. Uh, all right. I want this. Maybe, oh, look at that. Perfect. Put it down the first time and it was perfect. Uh, just about, just gonna move a little north. Perfect, perfect. For those of you who don't know, I'm the owner of oneupkeyboards.com, and so that's why I talk about one-up keyboards all the time. But I'm definitely a community member first, and I like one-up keyboards because it does a lot of cool stuff, but I also really appreciate what the rest of the community is up to, including Jack and Ortho Linear Keyboards. I really like his new Super Low Pro, by the way. That is sick. Stunner. All right, guys, well, with 52 viewers and only 35 likes, if you haven't already smashed the like button, could you go ahead and smash that like button now? We're gonna move on to talk about these B-Sun Browns. Um, so these B-Sun Browns are, I think they're only available one-up keyboards, am I right? I don't know. Am I right? These are a tactile switch with uh, removable stem legs, but they're also, uh, plate mount only so in a use case like this uh, they'll serve service pretty well I think excuse me Stephanie darling mm -hmm. can I ask you another favor please mm -hmm. could you grab me some water for the uh, hacko Okay, normally, never been a, a fan of browns personally. Me neither, until I got beats on browns. Because the housing is so tight, it feels much more tactile than a regular brown does. You should try them. Ooh, a new sponge. It's not actually, it's the second time I've used that sponge, but it's still looking pretty fresh. Okay, that's plenty. Thanks, you more than enough. Thank you. You know what I gotta do too? I gotta switch over to solder cam real quick. Solder cam. And I gotta fix the focus. Uh, just one second, 4K solder cam. Configure video. Focus. That is sharp as you like. All right. Well, with the ortho, we'll be onto that in just a second. If you haven't already, please smash the like button now. 
Uh, we'll be on to that in just a minute, but I just want to make sure here, lining up this plate, that I have got it in the correct position. So for those of you following at home, uh, you'll see that one plunger is there and the other plunger is there. So I definitely have the plate the right way around. And all I'm going to do at first is just punch in my four switches. So I'll pop it in this way. Now, the reason I know that it's this way, in case you were wondering, is that the uh, the two little legs are pointed at the top here. And I'm just going to show you on the overhead. You can see that the two little holes are on the top there. So exactly that is correct. I'm just going to push that all the way in. And I'm just going to drop that in there make sure it fits. It does. And that's it. I'm pulling it back out because I need to put my other four switches in. Now, the right way to do this, as Jack correctly told me, the first keyboard um, that I made, actually, this was it the first or the second keyboard that I ever made was a plank. And Jack actually told me the right way to do it. This, by the way, guys, is uh, necessary right now. I just need this. This is a switch puller, and this is from uh, oneupkeyboards.com. If you don't already have a switch puller, you should totally get one. Uh, So Jack told me when I first built my plank that I'd done it wrong because what I'd done is, oh, sorry, I need it again. See how often you need these things? Uh, because what I'd done is I'd put all the switches in and then tried to, um, after putting all the switches in, I tried to uh, push the PCB in and that's not actually the correct way. I now do the Jack Humbert um, on all of my builds. So if you see any of my keyboard builds, I'm actually doing the Jack Humbert every time. And the, the Jack Humbert, as I like to call it, is uh, putting the four corners in first uh, and then making your way these are, these are tight. There we go. Once you've done the four corners, you, the first thing you should do then is solder those four in then do the rest of the board. And he is absolutely correct in that assessment. Absolutely 100% correct. That is the right way to do it. So now that I've put those first four corners in, what I'm going to do is turn the board upside down, place those four corners on the switches, and then carefully and gently drop the PCB onto those four. Now, it's much easier to line up these, just these four, than trying to line up the whole board at the same time. That's why this is the right way to do this. All right, now that I've got that in place, I'm just gonna get my fan in position. And while I'm doing that, I'm just gonna remind you guys of two things. One, camera two is available. You can check out camera two anytime you like. It's a side view of the project, and you guys can check that out and you know get a different angle. If there's any, any things you wanna see up close, you might be able to see them from that angle. Two, I'm gonna ask you guys, don't forget to please press like and please press subscribe. If you haven't already pressed like and subscribe, now's a great time to do it. The more likes this show gets, the more people get to come join the show. And of course, the more people that join the show, the bigger it grows and all of that. Plans to do a plank light build? Uh, not yet, but I saw him announce it. I think it's super cool. I'd really like to do one. Uh, hopefully, uh, Jack will see the success of this show and offer me to do one. All right, there's my fan that's just come on. I'm just going to move this out of the way so you side viewers get a better view of that. All right, next up, I've got to light up the Hakko and prepare for solder can. With 44 people watching and 38 likes, I'd love it if you guys could give me just a couple more likes. Let's just check out the comments while things are heating up over here. At Skew Pete, you should do a Zelia 67 stem spring in Bison housing tactility for your feet. I would, I would, but... Um, I've been using yellows a lot uh, for my feet, and while I don't want to click, I've been looking forward to the bump, and I think uh, the best bump in the tightest housing is probably the B-Suns, and that's why I've decided to go for the B-Suns today. 
Chokan says, I'm aiming to build up an ortholinear collection. The old prionic never interested me as it looks so odd. Totally. Um, totally get you. I needed one because I needed one. I needed one for my foot pedal. Um, but I also have a plank as a foot pedal uh, right beside it. And um, yeah, uh, I'm. what can I say except I'm looking forward to this design. Uh, it's going to make my board a little bit smaller. And that little bit smaller means I can move my uh, plank a little bit closer. And I think um, I think it's going to look good. Original Sin says uh, the opposite, though. He liked the old look of the wooden ends on the prionic. Fair enough, man. Fair enough. Uh, it's a Furby. Says you'd use M1 where 1 is the number for layers and you want to switch to be held. Yep, that's how you do. Um, that's how you do it. QMK is a fun, fun thing. At SkewsP, you should really try kale box linears and clickies. We've actually got kale speed switches in stock at one up keyboards. Actually, they're in they're in the house, but they're not yet in stock. That's what they are. They're in the house. We got them. They're they're gonna be coming soon, but they're not uh, they're not quite ready yet. Um, just waiting for the soldering iron to get nice and hot. Don't forget if you haven't already, smash that like button. We're moving on to the solder cam. Uh, for those of you who are new to solder cam, uh, you can keep your eye in the top left corner up here where you see my hand waving around, uh, just so you don't get too dizzy, feel too ill. But what we're doing, it's getting in nice and close on these first solder welds. Solder number one complete. How's that for a nice tight view of soldering? For those of you who are new to soldering, what you want to do is apply the heat and apply the solder. And you want to apply the solder to the other side of the switch, then remove the solder, then remove the heat. There you go. First switch is in and down. Let's move across the board to the other side. If you haven't already pressed subscribe, please press subscribe now. This is the best view of soldering on the internet. To my knowledge. Of course, today's stream is available in full 4K. So don't forget to crank your resolution up. How do you like that for our first four solder joints? Thanks again to everybody who's new to the stream, who's live today, checking us out. Of course, if you're watching us into the future, do stick around. Lots more solder cam action to come. Just going to leave that there. Okay, 2490 says, isn't that a bit too much solder? Definitely not, mate. Definitely not. Let me show you uh, from the side view here as we go to action cam. Uh, there's the solder there. It's definitely not too much solder. Just gonna open up the door here to my side. Get some of those fumes out of the way. Uh, don't forget, whenever you're soldering, you definitely want to wear, you definitely want to wear eye protection. Uh, of course, I'm always wearing eye protection because I wear glasses, but if you don't wear glasses, you definitely 
You want to be in on the eye protection. Anchorbait says, I, I, want a sweet six, six, uh, I want a sweet 16 now. I bought a GH60 from one up today. So I'm out of hobby money for now. Thanks, man. Uh, BM McWirt says, got my sweet 16 today. Two, just waiting for you to get Aristotle's back in to build it. I'll have a custom plate made for it by the time you get them back in stock so I can make panda stuttles. I have terrible news for you, man. Aristotle's are all gone. They're they're out of stock everywhere. I've been in touch with the former manufacturer of them and they don't exist. So um, you might be hard pressed to find uh, uh, Aristotle's. Uh, Uh, I don't know. You'd have to look. I don't know. You'd have to look. I have 2,000 on order, and they're unable to be fulfilled. All right. Well, moving right along, let's, uh, let's get back to popping these switches in. Now... On most keyboard builds, before you put the switches in, you usually have to build the stabilizers, but I'm going entirely without stabilizers. Uh, usually with builds, you gotta clip the little legs, but I'm going without little legs, uh, as I got plate mount switches here, so uh, I don't need any of that either, so I'm just kind of ripping along here. It's like grip it and rip it, you know what I'm saying? Just grip it and rip it. Now, for those of you who've never built a keyboard before, this part is super easy so long as you're lining the pins up front and back. I personally love these B-Sun Browns because not only are they beautiful and tactile, but they've also got these little housings on them that uh, can be removed. So you can actually remove the switch after you've soldered it in place, which I think is cool because if I don't like these B-Sun Browns, I can switch them over to Pandas in a flash. There we go. The first row is always the hardest to get in because it deflects the plate the most. But once you've got the first row in, it'll hold up the second row and third row and so on and so forth. As we get closer over to the corner, things are gonna get easier. They do. I'm just gonna show you on the action cam here as I slam them in. Look, here's a switch. I'm just gonna take it, line it up, and this one in particular, the housing goes this way around. And I'm just going to push it down front and back at the same time. I'll do it again here. Look at this. Front and back at the same time. Look, just slam it in the hole. You can tell that it is a quality keyboard. First of all, steel plate on top, that is quality. Second, this milled aluminum base, beautiful. That's what it is, beautiful. We all know that Jack makes awesome PCBs. I don't know if this one's musical though. I know his previous ones have been musical. How hard is it to remove a switch from hole tights? Uh, young Kovi, not very hard at all. Uh, if you hang around for a bit, I can show you. Yeah, it already has like hole tights installed on it. That's that's basically what I'm what I'm saying. Those are those are hole tights. I can, I can actually. You know what I can do? Give me just one second. I can change this this focus a little bit. I'm really hoping that the focus is going to catch up with me here. Come on, focus. It's totally not focusing, is it? There we go. Okay, I'm leaving it there. Okay, look. I'm just going to show you here. You can grab this, like, actually, why don't I do it to this leg so you can see it better. You do this, and look, I'm just going to pull it up. 
gently. Oh, there, and I've just pulled it right off. Do you see that? Now I'm gonna push it back down. See that? That is removing a hole tight on a B Sun Brown. All right, let's keep going. Uh, but I'll show you how easy it is to remove uh, once they're once they're in place. All you need is one of these, uh, the switch puller from One Up Keyboards. Uh, you just grab hold of it and just pull the puppy straight out. Easy as you like. Guys, with uh, 43 watching and 42 likes, I'd love just a couple more likes. Just a couple more people slamming that like button. Hey, it would be awesome if you haven't already. Would you please press subscribe too? And while you're at it, why don't you go check in the about section below for links to this build from currently from MassDrop and links to everything else you can see on my desk. Plus, there's also a giveaway this week from Cooler Master so you can get your own MS120, which is a set that includes a mouse, or there's two gaming premium gaming mice, the MM520 and the MM530 that are also available. How hard are they to remove from the PCB? Just give me just give me 20 minutes or so just to solder these these switches in and then I'll show you how easy it is to remove them. It's it's really super easy. I want to try B Suns and Zelios. Do it, man. Do it. Anchorbaits has price range for your new high profile case. I think it's going to be just a little north of the 200 mark. I'm hoping somebody else might press subscribe. I set up the thing to uh, notify us every time a new subscriber comes in. We've only seen one so far. I'm really hoping somebody else will press subscribe and we'll see them join in that top left corner. GGC ADC. Seriously, people want to know the high profile case price. Okay, well, let's be straight up about it. Uh, we got to figure out how much it cost plus shipping arrived here. Then we've got to figure out how much shipping is going to be uh, out. Then we've got to make sure that we make at least a dollar um, because we're a business and we have to make money. And uh, then we're good. Under 300, guaranteed under 300. What's that? I don't, I don't know, Steph. I don't want to make any promises yet. Need to take this one out. This one, oh, there we go. Guys, if you haven't already, go ahead and smash that like button. Now's the best time to do it because we're just about to turn back on the solder cam. Okay, now what you do, the right thing to do here, you flip the board over, 
You make sure that all the little stems have made it through. So I'm just going to go check with my finger. It would be pretty rare for a bee sun stem not to have made it through because they're extra thick with that uh, with that hole tight already on there. But still, just want to make sure I rub my finger over them because my fingers don't lie and make sure that I always touch all of them, that they're all through. We're all through. Okay. Turn it back on. gonna be a second gotta wait for the thing to heat up what profile caps are going on DSA it's a good question I didn't get sent keycaps so I think my plan is actually to switch this over to be my foot pedal so those will be mostly DSA 2 by 2 use Uh, Rogerio Ferreira says, I'm getting the KBD fans new 60%. It's amazing and probably going to be 80 with free shipping. I will warn you, though, the Z key row is all shifted to the left if you want to fit your arrows in. A lot of people have been asking me about it, and I have sworn it off. If, if you're going to shift any of the keys, go with the ortholinear. If you're not going to shift any of the keys, there'll be a new design coming. Um... I want you to just be extra clear about that. All right, iron is to temperature. I'm gonna switch over to solder cam. Don't forget, keep your eye in that top left corner. If you're feeling at all dizzy about this. That first one wasn't quite warm enough when I put it down. haven't already smashed that like button do so now same goes to that subscribe button would love to have you guys back sometime and of course I take all my live streams and I turn them into individual videos so you'll be able to find this build as an edited probably to music video although I don't know maybe I'll maybe I'll do the instruction set with this one For those of you who bought yourself a Prionic and you're watching this into the future as, as a build along, thanks for joining. Don't forget to press subscribe. Don't forget to press like. Definitely do appreciate you hanging out. And of course, all the tools and everything on my desk are available in the about section below. So you can go and check those out. I don't understand how the zero is shifted to the left. Yeah, take a look at it. Uh, it's got a 2U uh, right shift to accommodate the arrow keys. Um,
Okay, the reason you want to do it in this order is apply the heat and then apply the solder to the opposite side is that the solder actually includes in it a rosin core. Now what rosin is, rosin is inert, it doesn't do anything except when it's heated. And When it's heated what it's able to do is remove rust from metal objects. Um, so what you're doing is you're actually heating the pad and then you're adding the solder directly to the pad so that the rosin quickly gets rid of any oxidation or corrosion on the pad and helps that join be exactly perfect. Pretty cool, right? I'm just going to go ahead and wipe this. Don't forget to keep your eye in the top left corner. There we go. If you're feeling at all dizzy by this. gonna give this a quick wipe again it had a little bit of a little bit of burnt rosin on it and it was messing up my joint If you haven't already, don't forget to press that subscribe button. I'm surprised we haven't had more subscribers today, if I'm honest. Usually we get a couple. If you're lurking, you haven't said anything yet, you're thinking, maybe I'll subscribe, maybe. This is the sort of place this is. You just kind of hang out, build some cool stuff play some cool stuff oh, that was pretty poor that was pretty poor indeed yeah that looks like a gross solder
for those of you who haven't been around the channel much before, the mods are community members, uh, people who've been around before, hanging around a bunch. They're here to answer your questions. They can take on a lot of uh, a lot of the questions and challenges that you've got. Quite knowledgeable about the keyboard community, and it is really that a community. Quick scratch. See, somebody said they have about just acquired sixty or so Model M TK TLK SDL keyboards. Do you have any uh, industrial TKLs in there? Any TKLs at all? second here. Just got to get some of that off of this. I don't know if you guys realize just how big of a contraption I got going on here, but here, can you see that? No, it's out of focus too. It is a big old puppy. Look at this thing I'm carrying around here. It's a 4K camera strapped to a soldering iron and it is not easy to wield around. If you guys haven't already, please crank your resolution up to full 4K. And of course, if you haven't already, please smash that like button.
Of course, if you're just joining, don't forget to go to the gleam.io link in the about section below. That's where you'll find this week's giveaway. The webcam is the same one that I have and it's not that heavy. Dude, can you tell that it's can it's uh, cantilevered over top of the soldering iron? And I'm holding this like a pencil. Have you ever held that thing on the end of a pencil? It's not that heavy. Love that. Here, look, check it out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll fix the focus here for a second. Look at the size of this puppy. Look at the size of just this, the support beam for it. This thing. Just the support beam for the damn thing is heavy as hell. Then the cable holding it up. Hold on, I'm gonna tip it a bit more here. Look at it. Oh my God. Not that heavy. You're crazy. It is actually, the camera itself is actually lighter than the C920 I used to have on there. Uh, but this one's, as I say, it's uh, cantilevered with that aluminum arm that my dad built me uh, to support the camera, so uh, it feels much heavier. But the weight is now much more over the tip than it used to be. Which means that it rests easier than it used to. It used to want to flip backwards, but now it, it's happy to rest on the tip, which is nice. Uh, come back again, uh, not next week. Uh, it'll be October 10th, I think, is my next stream. Is that right, or is it after that, Steph? October 15th, when's my next stream? Yeah, I was hoping you'd give me a date for that. Weekend of 1415 is my next stream. Yeah. And I, I will, even though I don't think I'm yet going to be able to afford the last 4K camera, I promise you a serious upgrade is coming. And you guys are going to love it. But yeah, it's quite a long time between now and my next live stream. Currently 42 viewers. If you haven't already smashed that like button, please go ahead and smash it now. You've seen soldering up close like this before. Tell me where. BN McWirt, no kidding. If there's a TKLs amongst them, you get in touch with me. Especially those industrial dark TKLs. Mmm, delicious.
Okay, just gonna give this a quick wipe. Move on to the bottom row here. All right, guys. Well, we're getting pretty close to the end of this one. Uh, only, what, eight switches left to go? Please press like. Please press subscribe. We'll do some more chit-chatting after this. For those of you who are wondering, all of the uh, parts and pieces in this build are listed in the about section below. If you haven't already, please use my affiliate link and go to Mass Drop to check this Prionic out. For 140 bucks, it is an absolute bargain. Aluminum milled base, steel top, Quality PCB. Don't forget, camera two is also enabled. You can go check that out. I think you can also give camera two its own like. You know, I've heard in the past you can't. I've heard in the past you can. All right, guys, we're on to the martini. Martini switch, here we go. and done here. Just gonna clean that off a little bit. Don't forget to keep your eye on the top left as this part can get a little bit jerky. Alright. Just before I turn off the soldering iron, I'm just gonna check that I did in fact solder all of the switches. Yep, doesn't look like I missed any. Johnny Tank says, hey Pete, instead of having the camera on the soldering iron, why don't you have a fixed mount with the camera on top of it and just move the board as you solder? Oh, I have one of those too, uh, Johnny. Uh, it's my action cam. Here, I'll just uh, show you what that looks like. Um, I have that too, so look, I could do this uh, and use my soldering iron. I'm just gonna switch off the soldering iron so I can show you. Um, 
that's actually how this came about, uh, Johnny. Um, so uh, what I was able to do with this is, as you can see, I could get right in there uh, and show it off. And I used to do that quite a lot. And actually, sometimes I still do just to show this thing off. But I thought it would be even better, even closer, if instead I, I went to this view and was able to show you um, exactly what it looks like. Uh, so, you know, none were ever any closer, none were ever any further. I mean, it's fine for this board on the action cam here. You can see I can get pretty close, you know, uh, even to the top row. But with a TKL or a bigger board, uh, it was difficult to do that. And Jealous Harath just subscribed. Yes, my second subscriber of the show. Thanks, guys. And as you can see, you when you subscribe, it gets notified in the top left corner. There's also a notification if you want a super chat. Super chat is enabled for today. We're... Uh, we're trying to make our way to 200 bucks uh, for the fourth and final 4K camera. Um, yeah, if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so uh, that way or by supporting us with uh, PayPal or uh, Patreon. Thank you to all the people who do have or who will support this channel. I definitely do appreciate it. Uh, the more support the channel gets, the more cool cameras and cool bits and pieces this show gets. All right. Right now, I'm doing a tutorial of the Switch mod that I created. Should I post it on Reddit? Definitely, Theodoro89. All right. Moving right along. You can see that we've got the uh, board all here now. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab my, uh, and it may disturb the board, I understand, but this is my testing cable. Uh, so I'm just going to plug this in over here. There you go. And now I'm going to head over to uh, tester. And I'm going to bring up old keyboard tester. keyboard tester and there it is let's just take a look and see if we have any of the switches working uh oh uh oh this isn't good it appears that none of the switches are working okay there's some stuff we're gonna have to try in order to get this thing going So what I'm going to do here is uh, just going to close keyboard tester for one hot second. Uh, and what I'm going to do is bring up easy key map. There it is there. And we go to new layout. And uh-oh, the prionic is not listed here. Error. Right. Well, then what I'm going to have to do... Oh, and I don't have... Oh, man, really? I don't have QMK? Okay, I'm going to have to get QMK. Let's get QMK, and we'll go from there. Uh-oh, it said uh, threats found. 
No. No threats found. That was weird. Alright, I'm gonna switch back here to keyboards. Sorry, just one second as I get this all organized. QMK. Dane Carter says, I can compile a default prionic hex for you. Yeah, would you? Just a real quick one. It's because it is taking longer than I wanted. Thomas Lau says, what are those sip things, slip on things he has on the switches? So these switches are the Beast and Browns and they come with them. Uh, but what you're talking about is whole tights. I can't believe this is taking so long to transfer from one hard drive to another. If you haven't already, go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Would love it if you guys would come back and hang out again soon. Don't forget to bookmark this video so that you can come back and watch again when you build your own prionic. This is the slowest extracting zip file I've ever seen on i7. Keyboards, prionic, idea here. How do you use this in Windows, guys? I'm a Linux user. This is this is voodoo to me. You know what? Actually, I've got this on my on my Mac. I've got this on my Apple right here. Do you have an SSD? I do have an SSD. I was copying from my hard drive to the SSD just then. Wait a sec. It's nine o'clock. No, I don't have it there either. I wonder what I've done with it. 
six shooter JD40 plank plank QFR Satan sprit There it is, prionic lufa dot hex. All right, that's the little one that I need there. Let me do it. Uh, what I actually need now is a micro uh, mini. Dane, I'm just gonna do it from my. I'm just gonna do it from my Mac. It's just like a ton easier. Now I just need to get a mini cable. plug into my Mac. This is convenient too because I don't need to... Uh, what's the difference between a prionic and a plank? Uh, one row of switches actually is the answer. Uh, a prionic is a, like a 60% and a plank is like a 40%. There are, there's a number row on the prionic. And there isn't on the plank. Oh, wait a sec. How come that's recognizing... Wait, hang on. This is recognizing... This is recognizing key presses. What the heck? Why wasn't it recognizing in Windows then? I'm gonna need to flash it in a second anyways, but give me a second to get to the bottom of this mystery first. Press the tester. Press the tester, now press reset. There we go, it's working. What the heck was going on last time when I tried this? Yeah, so that works. Uh, so the Windows key there, uh, and then this goes away usually. I gotta click back in here. And there's the arrow keys. Steph, are you laughing? dog. <laughs> Steph just showed me a video of a horny dog. Funny. I haven't seen that before. You with your dog, they said. So, yeah, I totally don't understand except that uh, this this machine has windows on it and it sucks and um, drivers probably didn't completely install. Yep. And for that, I would like to say thank you, Windows. And then what I'm going to do is properly program this thing uh, with my Mac. 
because I want to have the same key map on it that I had um, that I have on my other one, which obviously I also programmed with this Mac. Uh, unfortunately, I need to enter my password, so I gotta put it over here. There, done that. Now I need to go CD. I gotta go find this. So, desktop, TMK. Cool. That's it. I'm all set up. Uh, so let's let's finish this off here. And the best way to do that is going to be to screw in the legs and pieces and put the keycaps on it. Is it difficult changing switches now or still just as easy? Uh, give me one more minute. What I'm going to do is screw these in and then... Um, uh, and then it'll be easy. Now, uh, what hasn't been explained to me, what wasn't explained to me, is uh, where these screws go. Uh, does anybody here know the answer? Uh, do the screws go up from the bottom and grab this, or do they go down from the top? I'm going to say, because I've made uh, Jack's keyboards in the past, I'm going to say that Jack put them on the back side. Because I like to think that my friend Jack would do that sort of thing. Jack, if that's not what you did, I'd like to apologize for assuming that that's the sort of thing that you would do. It's just the way my shirt is folded. Just want you to know that. Man, the screw just doesn't want to be. It just doesn't want to be held by this screwdriver. I need to buy one of those magnetizing things. In fact, as soon as this show is over, I am going to buy myself a magnetizer. Interesting, actually. This doesn't go all the way through to grab the plate, so the plate is held independently. So the plate doesn't actually need to have those holes in it. Does it, Jack? Are you here, Jack? No, he's not here, is he?
Look at that beauty. All right, uh, just give me one second. If you haven't already, what do you think? Do you think there's value in lubing Gateron brown switches? Yeah. If you haven't already, smash that subscribe button. Look at it, it's just so perfect. Nicely done, Jack. Nicely done. All right. Well, next up for me is migrating this over. Oh, wait, uh, sorry, uh, Johnny, I forgot, uh, sorry, Young Covey, sorry, it's Young Covey who wanted to know, how easy is it, how easy is it to remove those beats on browns, check this out, check this out here, should I do it, oh no, I have to do it in this, in this aspect, uh, look, you just grab it, and you give it a, give it a good old college wiggle, and out of pops, that's it, uh, I would, I uh, show you on, um, I would show you on action cam, but I've just removed action cam. So, uh, and then look, to pop it back in, you just line it up and slide it right back in. Easy as you like. Easy as you like. <laughs> no problem, man. Sorry, I forgot for a second then. Um, everything switch. I haven't used my everything switch yet today. If you've been lurking, you've been hanging around for a while, don't forget to smash that like button. Hey, while you're at it, why don't I press subscribe too? We're just going to chill out, build some keyboards, do some other pretty cool stuff. Let me show you some of the projects that I got coming up. Looking forward to those. So not only do these B-Sun Browns come with those uh, pre-installed hole tights, but so too do the Pandas. The Pandas are a great switch, also available at oneupkeyboards.com. Yeah, yeah, hold on, just gonna test it. You know what, I gotta 
kind of switch cables on it. I'm trying to go with this cable here. All right, all right, let's see what's up now. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, the browns actually make for really nice foot pedalies. Yeah. Sweet, okay. definitely really like that and just before I finish up here I'm just gonna add a couple things I'm gonna add one of these OLKB stickers you know what I'm gonna add one of these one-up keyboard stickers too Not really going for that professional look. Just want it to be stuck down. But I can't help but want it to be straight. Yeah, man, that's awesome. That's super awesome. <laughs> I'm so excited. That's like, come on, that's way better. Dude, that's so good. Dude, that's so good. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh. Uh, where's my... I got another button in here that does something. This one. Oh, yeah, look at all the subscribers today. Thank you very much, guys, to all the guys who press subscribe. Oh, I had a little down peak, too. Hmm. It's probably when I was looking at the moto speed. Well, thank you again to everybody who tuned in today. This is so awesome. I just want to just want to smash everything. This is my everything cam. This is the one here. This one right here is the one that I'm going to replace with another 4K camera. Once we get enough uh, of your support in, thank you very much to everybody who supported today's live stream. Specifically, Jesper Lundqvist. Thank you, Jesper. Definitely do appreciate that. So fun. Thank you to OLKB and of course to Mastrop for hooking me up with this kick ass. Actually, I don't know if I should thank Mastrop for that. Thank you to uh, Jack at OLKB.com or Ortholinear Keyboards uh, for hooking that up. Um, OneUpKeyboards.com supplied the switches. 
I'm the owner of one-up keyboards. That's why I talk about it all the time. Thank you to everybody who joined in the stream. Thank you to, uh, Steph, did we give away those tickets? No one has asked about the tickets for uh, next week's Maker Fair. Next week's Maker Fair. We're at Maker Fair next week. So why don't you come? If you want to come, send us an email at oneupkeyboards at gmail.com. You can come, but only if you're in the New York area or uh, think you can make it. This week, 52 likes with 32 still watching. Thank you again to everybody who tuned in. Don't forget to press like. Don't forget to press subscribe. If you know somebody who's buying a Prionic, press that share button and share this stream with them. Thank you again to everybody who tuned in. Oh, and before you go, just before it, last thing, last thing, last thing, I promise. Don't forget to go check out this week's Gleam.io. Let me show this off. The Gleam.io link for the Cooler Master giveaway. The Master Mouse 520, the Master Mouse 530, or the Master Set MS120 with this mouse or the other mouse that comes with it. If you haven't already checked out my review for the MS120 or for these Master Mice, go check that out. One more thing, if you want one of these Ann Pro 60% keyboards, there's a link in the about section below for GearBest and a great uh, coupon code that'll get you a fantastic deal. On the Ann Pro, uh, like I say, as I said at the start of the stream, you know, uh, there were 20 of these keyboards that they had and we used all 20 of those coupon codes. Um, then they brought them back in stock. Now there's 50 coupon codes. 10 of them have already disappeared. So if you want one of these 60% and pros, grab it uh, while you can. It's a cool keyboard. Also did a review of one of those. You can check that out on my channel too. Thank you again to everybody who tuned in. Thank you to everybody who pressed like and who pressed subscribe. That was pretty cool, that little thing up in the corner that did the subscribe thing and the thing in the middle that did the, the whole uh, super chat thing. It was cool. Thanks again to everybody who tuned in. Looking forward to being back. It'll be a couple of weeks, as I said before. Uh, next week, we're at Maker Faire. Uh, the two weekends after that, we're away on holiday. Um, also note that uh, 1UP Keyboards will be closed for the first week of October. So if there's anything from 1UP Keyboards that you'd like, please buy it now. If you're interested in one of these Prionics, I'm just going to put it back up on screen. If you're interested in one of these Prionics, don't forget to go into the About section below. You know that I use mine. Every time I stream, I use mine. So uh, they're very useful, even just as a macro pad. Plus, as an ortholinear keyboard, which I know some of you guys use it as, a lot of you, probably the majority of you use it as, uh, it's an awesome keyboard too. If you want some of these Beats and Browns, check them out on oneupkeyboards.com. Thanks again. One more can I possibly say? Go into the About section, check out all the cool links, all the cool stuff. And we'll see you guys back again sometime in October. That is the end of the stream. But the chat continues. You guys can hang out for a little while longer. There is also a Discord. I don't have the link to that right now. But there is a Discord channel. And I will share that with you guys soon. Uh, it's a cool place to hang out after the streams to keep the conversation going. And talk to some dudes who are into keyboarding. I will talk to you guys again soon. Thank you again for a oh, super awesome stream. You guys take care.